Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Non-Fungible News. Today, we have the pleasure of sitting down uh, virtually, of course, with Jason Wiskovich, the man who creates these beautiful, uh, well, universe portraits of different different uh, photographs of uh, different galaxies and planets and things of that nature. Jason, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on. You know, I w- when you were first announced that you were dropping this, and I started looking into it, and uh, it's like this is really cool. This is uh, possibly, in my opinion, one of the most unique and creative. Um, projects that we've seen on v chain just because this is your work i mean you have the equipment the the cameras everything to to get out into space and take pictures um give us a little bit of background on why you have the stuff that you have to be able to take pictures of outer space that um nobody i've never met anybody that can take a picture like this Give us a little background on yourself and, and how you got into doing what you're doing. Yeah. So um, I, uh, I've always been fascinated with space as I think a lot of people have just because it is, you know, it's, as you could say, the final frontier. And um, when I was, uh, I think it was about nine, nine years old, my dad bought me a telescope uh, back in San Diego. And I remember sitting there looking at a full moon in this telescope and it would just blew my mind that there's this thing up in space that it's so far away and we can't, you know we can't touch it we can't you know we've been there but we can't uh we really don't know much about outer space and it's always just space has just intrigued me and um i've always had fascination with taking pictures um, whether that be landscapes um sky animals whatever it may be and when i moved here to utah there's such pristine skies out here i mean in my backyard i uh it's well where i live it's a it's a bortal five which means light pollution it goes up to about i think it's nine or ten and that's typically be like living in the middle of New York city. If it was a 10, one would be at like a, like Zion national park or a national park that has zero light pollution. And I'm at about a five and then, but South of me, uh, it's about a portal two, portal three, which means there's a zero light pollution. And, uh, when I moved here, I was just looking in my backyard one summer night and I noticed you could see the Milky Way, like the entire band of the Milky Way. And that got me thinking like, hmm, I wonder if we could take pictures of the Milky Way. So I had some buddies come over with some cameras, took some long exposures and you could absolutely see the Milky Way and and uh, and the, uh, the space dust in there. So I started looking into telescopes and astrophotography equipment and um, it's there's so much out there, so much, so many different styles of telescopes. If you want to look just at wide field, if you want to zoom in, you know, to see planets and things like that. Um, so I ended up getting a Celestron eight inch, uh, HD Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Uh, and what that means is it's a very, it looks like a cannon. It's, it's, a it's, um, I don't know, about two feet and it's about, uh, yeah, two feet by about a foot. And, um, the, uh, the, the point of that is to, uh, be able to see very deep into space. I mean, in relative terms, not talking about like Hubble, but, you know, here on earth. And uh, the reason why I picked that one is because I could see um, at 1400 millimeters at F7. Um, and that's just the aperture. But I can also bring that down to 390 millimeters at F1.9. So it's a pretty much a photon sucker. It can just gather incredible amounts of light extremely fast. So, so then what I did was I, I bought a monochrome cameras, which is a black and white camera. And then I use a filter slider in front of that camera. So I have luminance, which is just essentially black and white that just captures detail, red, blue, and green, which are your, your standard color spectrum to, to um, get all the colors. And then I have um, filters, which um, hydrogen, alpha, sulfur, and oxygen, which capture all of the gases that we can see in space. And that's what makes the very, like the, 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 uh, the picture that you have, 
um, the fish head nebula, that's, that's show, which is sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen all combined together. Um, that's what brings those colors out. So, um, yeah, so I just really started doing it, uh, learned a lot, um, in my journey in the last two years. And, um, you know, it's just really cool to be able to be just an average, average dude with a family and then be able to go look through a piece of metal and go look at Saturn and Jupiter and supernova stars that exploded, you know, 12,000 years ago, which that's what we're seeing right now, but that's not, there's nothing, it's no longer there anymore. It's gone. It's blown by the cosmic wind and, and, and space. So it's a, it's just really cool. It's, it's, it's a fun hobby. Uh, I would imagine it is. I mean, it's, it's amazing what you're doing. And I, I was talking to somebody about your project, um, somebody in the space about putting them as backgrounds and, and then how you only have between your, um, well, your universe collection on VC, there's only a hundred pieces. And I was thinking, you know, I'll bet, I'll bet this dude has thousands and thousands, but given what you do, I'm guessing that you're extremely particular about which ones you put out for sale, which you might have 500 of these pictures of the fish head nebula. And I wouldn't know the difference <laughs> between any of them, Yeah, but I'm sure you do. And you can probably pick out the flaws and things that you don't like. And, yep. and uh, you know, it was interesting at the time you dropped your first 60 I don't think anybody expected them to mint out in uh, four minutes. I believe it was four minutes, you know, just yeah. given the price, which relatively speaking is not a very high price. I mean, I don't know what vet was at the time of your initial drop 500 or uh, 10, 10 cents. Yeah, it was right. It was, it was about nine cents, but it was funny because I dropped it on a Saturday and I remember I was in Vegas with my family, but that Friday before is when we had that crash where vet was sitting at like 14 or 15 cents. So you know, but, but, but to, to really quick piggyback off what you said, you know, I, I do, I mean, I have thousands of pictures and I literally went through, I mean, my initial collection was going to be a 250 piece collection, but I ended up dropping it down because I went through every picture. I'm very meticulous about my work. And I, I told myself, I'm like, I'm not going to put these on the market and sell these to people if I wouldn't buy them myself. So, I mean, I, I have a whole, I have a whole nother collection that like, that uh that i could drop but i don't want to i don't want to get greedy or i don't want to get um i, I don't want to do the disservice to you know everybody in the in the vnft community so yeah that's if anybody is questioning buying one of these i mean just know what goes in and and we know that there's a lot that goes into so many of these different collections but just know that um, Jason is super picky about what he's going. The floor is way too low right now. In my humble opinion, you know, it's well below mint price and given, um, the nature of the work, it, sh it should be well, well, well beyond that. That's neither here nor there. Um, so anyway, how did you, how did you feel about a four minute mint out on the first one and about a two minute mint out on your second drop? <laughs> I was, I mean, like, like I said, I was, I was sitting in Vegas at the Hello Kitty Cafe with my daughter and, uh, and I was watching it and I mean, I was just refreshing it. And I mean, I think I refreshed it three or four times at it. I mean, I was shaking. I was, I, I was like, I was mouthing to my wife cause she was about 50 yards away buying some Hello Kitty cupcake and, you know, a, a strawberry lemonade. And, uh, and I was just like, I was, I mean, I was shaking. I walked over there and I just, I, I felt like I was like, I was just numb with excitement. Uh, it was just, it was just the coolest feeling ever. And then, you know, and then just getting the reaction from the community and uh, you know, it, it's, it's nice to see that, you know, not only, you know, I mean, as you can see in the NFTs, it, it says how long the exposure times were, you know, a lot of those were between 20 and 60 hours of just taking pictures and not including another 10 plus hours to edit these. So, I mean, you know, there is a lot of work that goes into it and it's, it, it's validating, um, and humbling when you see just the community get behind you. And then even then to go beyond that, all the people that have bought in the physical prints like yourself and a lot of other people that don't want to be doxxed. So don't worry, I won't do that. <laughs> but um, there's just, you know, there's just been a lot of support. And then to go even beyond that, all the people that have said, Hey, I, I, I wasn't expecting it to min out and that fast. So when are you going to drop another one? So that was cool. Then I got to create, you know, the expanse and, um, I see that mint out, you know, in under two minutes too. And then again, 
all the people that wanted physical copies. It was just, it was just really cool to see that. Yeah, that was awesome. And I was surprised at how quick you got this physical copy out. (laughs) Yeah. There's so much waiting in the NFT world, especially, I mean, I've waited weeks and weeks and months at times for uh, physical items to get shipped to me. And man, you were Johnny on the spot. About five, about five business days is what it takes. I have a really good partner that, that helps me with the physical copies and, um, and, you know, like it's, I mean, as you can see, the quality is impeccable. It's, it's, uh, you can hang it on your wall, you know, do whatever you want. I mean, I have a, I have a gentleman who's, who's looking to do a, uh, uh, a five piece mosaic and that's going to be, that's going to look really cool on, on his wall. So, well, my goal is to, I, I missed the first drop, uh, hit the second one. My goal is if you keep doing these, I, I'm going to try to get one out of every, every drop and uh, get a new piece for my wall every time, but we might have to, we might have to talk custom and I might have to get like a two by two or, or something if you can make them that big. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I can, I can make them pretty much as big as you want. Right on. Um, so how'd you, uh, decide to, to launch this on V chain? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So I looked on, so I originally launched, um, two of them, uh, on open C because I had some buddies, um, um, Astro backyard, uh, Bray Falls, which are like, they're like the OGs in, in the astrophotography space, cosmic background, um, and a couple others that, uh, that launched on open sea. And one of the guys, uh, ended up curating a whole collection and it was, I think five, five people went in and I think they, they brought about 20 of their own NFTs in there. Um, and this was when, I think this was in May. So Ethereum was, you know, pretty, pretty high. It was, it was doing very well. And, I think they they spent about 60 bucks to to mint and they minted a hundred of them they ended up selling out i think they sold i think it was about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars each of them got wow yeah uh the average mint price was like i think like four eth or something like that so they did really well um and i got really jealous and upset that they didn't ask me to do it so i was like well how can how can i do this how can i sell my art and um you know like i said i minted two on uh, open sea um i think i sold them for like you know 15th of an ETH, which, which was cool. I felt, I felt honored and I was really happy, but I'm like, I want, I want to launch a collection on my own. I want to do this on my own. And I looked at Solana. I looked at uh, OpenSea. Um, I looked at Harmony One, but I'm like, you know, I, I love VeChain. I love the project. Um, I, I, uh, I love what VeChain stands for. And I think what it can really do in the real world. And um, just started kind of researching it. And then I saw this uh, VC and I thought it was a really clever play on OpenSea. And uh got into the discord. Um, and actually when I got into the discord was like a week before V Kings minted. So I was like, all right, cool. Like I, I minted three V punks, you know, a couple of months before my first NFTs and I'm like, all right, well, V Kings looks cool. So I minted. Um, and then I got hooked bread and all, you know, bread and crypto bomber and, uh, all, all those boys just, uh, sucked me in. And, uh, I just thought it'd be a really cool place to, 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 to mint. The community has been, you know, nothing short of fantastic. Um, so yeah, I just decided to mint on VC and, uh, you know, go from there. Well, right on, you know, uh, I think you made the right choice. I think you hear it flying around Twitter all the time that this community is, um, well, in my opinion, it's second to none. I've, I've bounced into others and, you know, we're still in the early phases, so it's growing and it'll, it'll get to where those other ones are, but at least knowing that we're in the initial stages and we're, you know, kind of part of the core community is pretty cool. Um, Absolutely. Well, and the cool thing too, is that, you know, you have multiple styles of NFTs on VC. I mean, you have your pixel art, you have your AI generative art, you have my art, which is, you know, true photography. Um, You have, you know, uh, NFTs that, that, that are, that are having games. You have your web two, web three is like, like mad V apes. Um, I mean, there's just, there's just a whole collection which can touch everybody. And that's what I think makes it unique and great. And again, like you said, we're in the early stages. Um, you just gotta be patient and hold. You can't expect, you know, 50 extra turns in a couple of weeks, unless you bought mad V apes, but, um, <laughs> um, but, you know, and, and, and the cool thing too, is like, I've collaborated with almost every project on VC, which, um, 
it's been a huge honor for me and, uh, you know, it helps get my work out there. It helps get their work out there. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think the future is very bright for, for VC and, um, all the VNFTs and, and us who are holding and, uh, investing time and money into the community. Yeah. I think I have a few too many VNFTs, but I'm yeah. not, I'm not slowing down. Yeah. We always say, yeah, this is, this would be my last man. I'm not going to mint anymore. And then a week and a half later, well, I just meant to this and I ended up picking a bunch of floors up and, but it's just, I just, you know, I know we'll be good in the long run. We'll, we'll all make it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's, uh, let's look a little bit into the future. What, do, what can uh, the people, the VFAM, the greater NFT community expect going forward? I mean, I know I've seen it. The people want more, like you said, you've done collaborations with, I mean, Pretty much every single VNFT project, it's a hot ticket item. Your your uh, photography. What uh, what's next? What can we look forward to? Yeah, so um, I I may be releasing some more universe stuff, but that that won't be for a little bit. But I do have a new project that I've been working on with a partner of mine, um, and it uh, it's going to be a. Uh, obviously an NFT. Um, I can't give away too many details on it as I don't want anybody to uh, rip the idea off, but Come on, uh, I it is, tell anybody. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Um, no, but um, it's uh, there's going to be a lot of utility to it. It's going to have another space theme to it. Um, and uh, the point of this NFT is to be able to use this and wear this in the metaverse in video games. Um, and um the, uh, the, the extra utility to this is that we, we, at the end of the day, we all invest in crypto, um, whether it's VeChain, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, um, you know, Veracity, SHA, whatever it may be, uh, we still invest in, in things like that. And a lot of the time we follow YouTubers. And most of the time when you follow a YouTuber and they show a coin, we're too late you buy in at the you know upper mid to peak of it. And then I don't want to say the rug gets pulled, but then people sell to get their initial investment back. And then now we're stuck holding that project for months, if not years. So we have come out with a program that helps identify these algorithms and um, identify these coins and will give you an early advantage on purchasing these coins because it's right when the algorithm hits. So you can get in there, purchase the coins, get there closer to the bottom or closer to the middle, write it up and do what you wish. So with that being said, that program will be incorporated into these NFTs. You'll be whitelisted to beta this, utilize this and hopefully make money on this. So um, I'm still in the works with VC right now with Brett and the crew to figure out how we can launch this because we have two variants of the NFT. We have a, a web three model that's, you know, your 3d looking, uh, VNFT, but we also have a um, video slash, I don't know, GIF or GIF, however you say it, or, however the kids say it these days. And uh, and um, it's fully interactive, so you can spin it around. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's really cool. It's very intuitive, very interactive. And again, the utility on this is something that's never seen before. And we're hoping we can even launch a token with that um, to help with, with, the, uh, with this program so it's a it's going to be a really cool uh new type of nft so uh you were talking about whitelist on that is that uh white listing going to incorporate people that hold a universe piece or is it going to be whitelisted people that buy the nft are whitelisted to use the the program yeah that's, that's a great question so finally yeah you universe holders you get you get, you get to be whitelisted for something. So yeah, um, we're going to be doing the whitelist. So every universe wallet will be whitelisted for this, uh, this NFT. Um, the price and amount is still uh, to be determined. We're thinking around 2,500 NFTs. Um, but again, we're not too sure. We're still, I'm still working out the, the, the attributes and things like that. We will have rarities. Um, and then we're going to have, something similar to how, uh, you know, your golden tickets are um, with the golden, I can't say what it is because that'll give it away, but it'll have gold on it and that will give you 
uh, that will give you an instantaneous white spot, oh, I'm sorry, white list spot to the beta um, for this program. That's amazing. Yeah, and we will have some whitelist spots too. We're, we're gonna probably run, we're gonna, I'll be making a separate Discord and then we'll have, you know, a, a Discord uh, competition for invites and things like that. And uh, my my partner actually, he, he he has a play to earn Discord and a program that has over 30,000 follow or 30,000 users. He does Axie Infinity, uh, Peg Axie. So he's gonna be bringing a lot of his, well, the goal is for him to bring his community over to um, VC and VeChain. As you know, I think we have what 1400 unique wallets throughout the community or 1400 members or whatever it may be. Uh, we need fresh blood. That's, that's, that's just a fact. And um, I think this is a really good way to inject our community with fresh blood um, and then kind of possibly merge the communities. And then I think it'll be a very good bridge between the VeChain community and this play to earn community. Um, and bridging that gap between, I guess you could even say the Western world and the Eastern world, because a lot of these people from play to earns are in, you know, Malaysia and South, uh, Southeast Asia, South Asia. Um, so just trying to merge, merge that, uh, bridge that gap and uh, inject fresh money and fresh blood into this community, I think is a, a necessity. Yeah, that's absolutely a necessity. Um, you know, I think it was last week on the Bread and Bomber show. Um, I don't know if you listen to that, but he had, uh, I forget his name, but somebody from uh, Proton. Yep. And uh, Hunter, I think it was. Hunter, right? yeah. yeah. Hunter, yeah. And that was really interesting for anybody that didn't listen to that. But I mean, it's so Bomber has the same ideology as you. And I think everybody does. A lot of us don't have the means or the following uh, to get other communities in, but that's ultimately what we need. So, between you and, and bomber, you know, we're, we're not, I shouldn't say we, cause I mean, it ain't me. Uh, but you guys are reaching out into other communities and that's really important. You know, we get comfortable in our, in our little place here because I mean, yeah, I see Jason Wiskovich on Twitter every single day and interact and I, you know, see these other people and, you know, we become friendly and, and, you know, know one another, but it is important to get out there. Yep. And, and it's good to see that uh, you're building a project that will indeed get more people in here and also get some, some, uh, you know, maybe some of us venturing out more. Cause I know there's people in the yep. chain community that, that don't venture out to other projects and, and, you know, they take what they hear from others that, okay, well, I don't want to, I don't want to go venture out. Well, it's important to do your own, you know, D Y O R, right. Do your own research and, yep. and check out what else is out there. So but, uh, you know, we've all landed on VeChain for a reason, um, but we, we all have a job to do, whether we know it or not. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, you do a great job, you know, bringing on people like myself, like like Bomber, um, and just getting getting the word out, um, talking about new projects. And, and I mean, yeah, like, like Bomber said uh, last, uh, on Thursday, that cross-chain compatibility whether it's like safe swap or or um you know atomic swap or uh what i mean even like like v exchange and things like that like getting different types of coins into the marketplace getting uh people from proton getting people from solana from harmony one whatever it may be doing that is is huge because that will create new wallets and that will create new buzz around other projects and other chains that will come over to here and vice versa and I mean, that's the only way we can grow. And, and, and like you said before, I mean, we are so early. Like people are like, oh, the train's left the station. It has for Bitcoin, but not for everything else. Right. I mean, I, I was having a conversation with my wife uh, the other day. I was like, because she she asked the same thing. She's like, well, aren't you late to the party? I'm like, no. Like, I mean, look in the 80s. What was the computer in the 80s? Macintosh. Right? It was like, I believe it was like in the 80s, it was Macintosh. A little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think like HP was in there too a little bit, but then fast forward, you know, 30 years, you have Mac, you have um, ThinkPad, you have Intel, you have all these different types of things. I mean, we are so early in this space and everyone thought computers, you know, oh, this is, this is the gateway to the devil. This is crazy. This is, you know, the internet. It's the same thing. This is, this is in my opinion, and I've said this all along, this is the dot-com boom of our generation. And I for sure will not miss this at all. I'm only in crypto to take care of my kids. I mean, I don't, I don't need a Lambo. I don't need a, a helicopter. I don't need a yacht. I mean, it'd be nice. Yeah, sure. But I'm this, what I do for this 
it all goes away from my kids. Like that's, that's my goal is to have my kids. Of course, I'm going to teach them lessons and like, you know, not let them be greedy little pricks, but, <laughs> um, and entitled, but no, I, uh, you know, that, that's, that, that's my goal. In this. And I think that, that we are very early into this space. And I mean, we do have a very good community and I think that as long as we show how good we are to other chains, there's, there's no reason the sky isn't the limit and we can't bring more into this community. Yeah. And I know I kind of have this conversation to, uh, to some degree with most everybody that I, that I interview and get up on the channel. Um, and everybody obviously has the same way of thinking. I put in my, I think it was March newsletter. It might've been my first newsletter in February that whether you are in crypto now or not, you're kind of going to be forced in down the road because yep. I mean, this is, it's, it's taken over. It, it will be the way, whether it's V chain, Bitcoin, the beauty is, is that it's like computers. Every computer manufacturer has a little different, uh, you know, they have their own nuances and their mm -hmm. different software and technology and, and different, uh, you know, different uses for their product. Like you don't see IBM computers in people's houses, but you see one at every single um, retail store. Cause that's the, that's the software that, that does all that crap. You know, I use Apple for everything. You might use Samsung for everything. And it's just, it's no, it's no different with crypto. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they're all going to be holding hands somewhere or another. They're all going to be working together in some shape, way or form fashion. So, you know, but that's, but that's why you said too, like diversify your portfolio. Like I love VeChain more than, you know, as, as much as you know the next dude in this uh in this community but like i don't have all my eggs in one basket i mean you know that is my financial advice <laughs> uh because yeah i mean you can throw all your money you can throw your eggs in one basket but that i mean that's that's it doesn't give you much room to to maneuver elsewhere if that one fails so which i don't think it'll fail but i mean again you know imagine if you had had you know 10 grand into solana last year instead of 10 grand into v chain yeah Exactly. So do your, uh, well, I mean, a lot of the people in your inner circle in your personal life, they know what you do and, and mm -hmm. some are on board with you and, 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 uh, you know, you have partners in the business and everything else. What about the, what do you say to the people that tell you you're, you're nuts, you know, you're, yeah. you're wasting your time, you're wasting your money. And I mean, what do you, how do you talk to those people? I just tell them Bitcoin's a scam. It's for money laundering, sex trafficking. Don't get in it. Um, and and um, <laughs> I mean, that, that's always what they think. I mean, you know, that that's what people think. It's for money laundering. And I'm like, yeah, so is the US dollar. So is the euro. So is the yen. So is, you know, so is the ruple. So is every currency in the world. It's for the same damn thing. Um, I just, the, the way I explain them to things, I'm like, you know, like we all, we all like to spend our money differently, whether it's clothes, cars, food, video games, whatever it may be. And, that, and that's fine, you know, to each his own. But like, I, you, you see these people like a Warren Buffett. They, you know, they don't go around investing in, uh, or I'm sorry, not investing. They, they don't go around just buying random, random stuff when they were, when they were starting out, you know, they, they did their research. They invested in what they thought was going to be popular tech, um, science, things of that nature. And look where they are now. Um, whether you like it or not, whether you embrace it or not, cryptocurrency and blockchain blockchain technology is the future. I mean, it's it's a, that's a simple fact. Um, the way that the the world governments are going right now, with the way that they want to control money and finances, that's the that's the point of cryptocurrency being decentralized, so that you can't do that. I mean, you know, you see, you know, movies back in the day, like Blade Runner and things like that, where um, it's a credit, you, it's, it's a one world currency, a credit system and things like that. Like exactly what China is doing right now. There's a reason why most cryptocurrency, except for I think a handful are banned in China because they don't want to give the people the power for their own finances. So I do think that that's the way that the world is going to go again, just like the internet, just like the computer. It's, it's, it's what it is. Um, and with the financial institutions nowadays, uh, and you know, po possibly or probably in the next 10 to 15 years, you know, I don't want them seeing and seeing what I, you know, oh, I took out 400 bucks. Why'd you do that? What'd you do that for? And have access to all that stuff. I don't, I don't need that. It's my money. 
why do you need to know what I did with it? You know, but um, a lot of people do think that, you know, we're crazy for doing this and we're foolish and, you know, that's okay. That's their opinion. Um, that's a prerogative. And I don't say, Oh yeah, well, I'll see you in 10 years on my yacht. I'll invite you. We go down to Morocco. Like, no, I don't, you know, that's, that's, that's classless. Like I just say, Hey, check it out. Do some research on blockchain, see what it's about. Do, do your own research on it and tell me that it's not, that's not the future or tell me that that's not what you want in your life, having a decentralized platform for everything. Do you want the government to be able to freeze your accounts like they did in Russia, like they did in Ukraine? Or do you want to be able to have the money whenever you choose to have it and to do what you see fit with it because you earned it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I tread lightly with my conversations with people because it seems to me that there's either people that are just, they just don't know about it and they're skeptical because they don't know and then there's just the flat out ignorant people that that just say uh oh you know bitcoin's fake money or or these nfts you know you're stupid you're wasting them i i won't talk to those people i'll direct them to resources yeah but i can't you know if you're ignorant and just listen to whatever you want to listen to and I can't help those people, you know, and I, yeah. I just, I tried, I used to try. And then there, there was a day where I was just like, Nope, I'm, I'll give you the resources if you want them. Yeah. Everyone's going to have their opinion. Everyone's going to mean have their reasons why they feel the way they do. And, and, and that, again, you know, that's okay. If, if, if they, if they've done their research and they've come to that conclusion that it's not for them, then, Hey, g- good on you. You know, like that's, that's fine take the blue pill, go back to sleep. Like that's, that's your choice. That's your prerogative. That's fine. But, um, you know, they say, Oh yeah, well it's, 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 it's online. It's how is it your money? Well, do you have your cash under your pillow or is it online in the bank? How, tell me what's, what's the difference in that aspect of it? Except one is centralized and one's decentralized. I have control over this. You don't really have control over this. It's kind of like you're, you know, you don't have the keys. You don't have the crypto. It's 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 an identical thing. If you're trading on a Coinbase compared to having the money in your bank, right. the bank shuts down, takes it down. Coinbase does the same. You don't have it. But if you have a ledger or something like that, you have your money. But so neither here nor there. <laughs> you can take the blue pill, go back to sleep, or you can jump on board. You can actually go get you a uh, no nerds tablet. That'll make there you, you go, and you'll be in, going in the right direction. Um, so we just got a couple minutes, maybe a minute left here. You got any final thoughts for the people? I mean, you got uh, yeah. good stuff out there. We got stuff to look forward to. Yeah, no, I appreciate everyone. Um, you know, uh, first and foremost, just, just, uh, you know, talking, uh, to me in the community being, um, uh, supporters of my project and, and the whole V chain community as well in VC and world of V and things of that nature. Um, just to really appreciate it. Uh, all the love I've gotten for that. Um, you know, again, minting out both projects, physical mints, things like that. Um, I look forward to helping you guys out too with this new project um, and the new tool. I'm, I, I have very high hopes for this. I, I know it's, uh, we, we've tested it. It's worked very well, um, but there's still a lot to build out on that. But um, I look forward to, you know, getting another project hopefully again it's on vc like i said nothing's for sure yet i'm still talking with brett and the boys but um you know thank you guys for everything thank you boomer for for having me out here and for for doing this it's been a it's been a pleasure all right well thank you for coming on i appreciate your time